before we share the grace, why the woman of God was bringing forth the word, the Holy Spirit reminded me about a lady that was brought to me while I was on campus doing ministry. Very talented. She was graced in music. The brother said, man of God, you need to work with this lady. She's graced. And I began to build her music ministry and help her life. She was just in 100 level at that time. After about three years, I didn't see the lady on campus again. And then one thing led to the other. I reconnected with her. I got her number and I called her. Where have you been? She said, Gabe, I am married now. I said, what? You were reading a five-year course. When did you finish? She said, I didn't finish. My mother put me under pressure and arranged for me to marry a politician in this Makoti town. I'm in his house right now and I'm carrying his baby. He didn't allow me to finish school. I said, what? Can I visit you? She said, you can come on. I am in a prison now. He doesn't allow me to go out. He doesn't allow people to come. But you can come. Then she began to lament. This lady that had potential, as that when I was talking to her, she was not even sure she was born again. Again. She married a politician, a drunkard, a womanizer. He was womanizing, but he would not allow her. To even, he not so much as allow even her male friends to come. He said, Gabe, he doesn't allow anybody to visit me. As we're talking, the man came in. I greeted him. He just looked at me and passed. That is what the lady's life was reduced to because of pressure. I don't know who's pressurizing you today. That all your mates have gotten married. What are you waiting for? Look, and I want to say a word here to all of you. Ministers of God listening to me. Many years ago, I decided as a youth pastor. I hardly ask people now, are you in a relationship? I don't want that question to add to the pressure somebody is going through. I know what's happening in your romantic life. I will hardly ask anybody that kind of question now. And when people get married... I'm not the one that will go and be asking, how far your wife don't live for me? Because the, the, the pressure doesn't end. Like she was saying, even after your wife, say, your man of God, your wife don't enter, she don't live for me. And then when she eventually starts vomiting, they want to know what sex of baby. If your wife gives birth and you send the news, oh, my wife has delivered, so we call you and say, what sex? If you say it's gay, say, ah, we thank God, we thank God, we thank God, thank God, thank God. If you say it's a man, they say, correct man, sharp shooter, correct man. Who said the girl child is a disadvantaged fellow? And I want to speak to all the ladies here. You are not a disadvantaged entity. Oh, good. Women carry power. That is why if you're a married man, learn to listen to your wife. They are sharper in picking fake people around us than we do. So as a married man, when my wife starts raising concern about anybody around me, I start distancing myself because they are graced with intuition. And all of the single young men, the single young men today, learn to make friends with sisters in the house of God. They will help arrange your life. Some of you are too scattered because you don't have female friends. Women are graced with organization. When you have them around you, your life is organized. And let me round off by saying, if you honor the women folk, one of the best ways to demonstrate it, don't take advantage of them when they come around you. Whatever you don't want anybody to do to your sister or your own daughter, don't do it to any lady around you. While we're on campus, I had opportunity. Ladies presented sex to me freely. I ran because I didn't want that anybody to do anything funny to my sisters. I have two lovely sisters. 
I took a, a, a vow to us sexual purity so that my sisters can be covered. I didn't rape anybody's daughter. So no man is permitted to rape any of my sisters or my daughter. So young man, if a lady is offering sex to you freely, run, if not for anything, for the fact that your sexual purity should serve as a cover for your sisters or your unborn daughter. It's a reason to be sexually pure. Everybody lift up your hands in the hall and say, Father, I will live a sexually pure life. Even if you are married, make a pledge unto sexual purity. Let your marital bed undefiled. Stick to just your partner alone. Place that heart on righteous right now and begin to ask for the grace to live sexually pure. Let us pledge our allegiance on this Father's Day and pray. Even the ladies, pray the same prayer. Father, I pledge an allegiance to live a sexually pure life. Go ahead and pray that prayer right now before I release the blessing over you. I shall live a sexually pure. I'll be true to my wife. I'll be true to my husband. I'll be true to my fiance. I'll be true to my fiance. I shall not double date. I shall not take advantage of somebody's daughter that I'm not married to. I shall not take advantage of any, any, any young man that comes around me. In Jesus' precious name.